aren't sure which turbo manifold to use for the A-body Chevelle, well, today I'm going to show you the best manifold I've found, plus the correct combination to go with it. So we'll get started. So there's a lot of options out there for turbo manifolds. Now you've got some big brand name companies that, have, that make some. You've got folks that are cutting up and re-welding them and putting them on eBay and everything in between. Today I'm going to show you the best one I've found, plus the correct driver side manifold to go with it and how I kind of put it all together. Plus, at the end of the video, I'll show you what I have been using in the past and why I'll never use it again. So this is a combo log style manifold from Failure Speed and Performance. They're from somewhere in Pennsylvania. I'm not exactly sure where. I'll leave you a link uh, in the description down below to his website. But this is a very high quality, made in the USA, beautifully TIG welded up, log style manifold now it's gotten a little bit of rust because i bought this one a little while back it's been sitting on my shelf and uh it's collected a little bit of moisture and some surface rust but it is going next week for a uh, ceramic coat and um and, and then we'll get it all uh, sealed up this is a t4 manifold so a t4 uh, turbo will fit on here now inside there is a little bit of uh, material that you could probably take a dremel um, to and uh, and clean it up and make it a little smoother but uh, you know for the most part you could really just bolt this thing on and uh, call it good um, again it's made out of some very very beefy material uh, for a turbo log manifold this is very very nice um, like I said, the, the quality is very good because it's all done here in the U.S. I think he's a one-man shop, so he does all of his own, obviously, cutting and welding and piecing it all together and, and really puts together a beautiful product. One thing you'll find on very cheap headers uh, or turbo manifolds is the header flange. If it's really thin, that's where you'll get exhaust leaks because it doesn't matter what kind of gasket you use. There's not enough material or support structurally to kind of hold it all together. So the thicker the header flange, the better it is for sealing up. And these seal up absolutely perfectly. Nice, thick, beefy. I think he's even uh, maybe gone with a little bit thicker uh, flange on some of his newer stuff. But uh, absolutely beautifully done here. This log uses a two and a quarter inch v-band clamp assembly on the end so a little on the small side you know most people look for a two and a half inch but you know quite honestly on a t4 it's going to be just fine but certainly a very very high quality piece here um, again all the workmanship material for a small one-man shop is is what you'd expect you know the guy obviously cares a lot about what he does here so um Let's show you how uh, they bolt onto the car, and uh, I'll talk about the engine mounts and everything else I use to go with it. So these just drop in from the top, and I'm going to bolt these on without the header gasket, just so you can kind of see what uh, you know how it all fits up here. But the most important, one of the most important things about doing an LS swap in the A body, and we've talked about this before in the past, is the LS adapters you use, the engine mounts and the frame mounts. Now the engine mounts is a typical motor mount and you use just the standard um, you know clamshell style GM. Uh, I use energy suspension mounts. Frame mounts you can use the smaller big block Chevy it really doesn't matter. The LS adapter is where things become super critical and why this is important here is this engine sits in here very very well. Um, it sits down nice and low in the saddle uh, where it's supposed to. And I can't remember what the overall dimension is uh, on the, uh, the mount, the frame mount, and the uh, um, LS adapter. But it's fairly narrow. Um, it's under four inches, I believe. So there are some engine mounts out there or LS adapters that will stack this thing up pretty tall. And that's okay as well. But... It's really critical for the, the downstream drive line angles to get this in here perfectly. And, you know, the good news about doing this right with the mount uh, is the pan fits perfectly. And then everything else downstream, transmission, drive shaft angle, and the rear pinion angle uh, on the differential is, is good. So you don't have that drive line vibration that you get. So 
that's what I use here. These I will leave the link in the description down below of all of the product I use um, for the uh, LS adapter, frame mount, and engine mount, so you'll know which ones I used in here. And certainly I'll link the uh, exhaust log as well. But these fit in here very, very nicely. Very, very simple. Uh, no clearance issues on the passenger side. Uh, you can certainly pass the downpipe uh, through there. There's plenty of room. So very, very nice how this all uh, kind of comes together and uh, fits absolutely perfectly here on the passenger side. Now let's take a look at the driver's side. Now the driver's side's a little more complicated as the manifold has to come in up from the bottom if you leave the steering connected. Now the steering is the exact reason why a lot of the other factory manifolds don't fit that well. Plus if you use like the truck manifold, uh, I believe it hits up against the frame. Uh, I don't really know, you know, what years those kind of encompass, but typically the popular years on the, you know, the Gen 4 LS, all of those truck manifolds hit. So it's a little more complicated, you know, when it comes to that. But, you know, as far as uh, this manifold goes, it fits in here very well. Now, this is the 98 to 02 Camaro F body manifold. Um, I think the, some of the later ones uh, are a little bit different as far as the EGR uh, that's in the uh, uh, top of the manifold, but for the most part, um, any of them in that generation, I think, fit very, very well, you know, with the frame mounts and the LS adapters and stuff that we talked about a, a minute ago. So um, the F-body manifold is certainly the way to go, and they work out really, really well with this combination. So once we get it all bolted down, we can kind of look and see how the fitment is here. Now on the passenger side, that's usually the, the difficult side if you have the alternator over here as well. And the good news about this one is um, the clearance is good on the control arms, but the turbo sits out far enough that it does uh, it stays far away from that uh, uh, from the turbo and the alternator keeps them separated. But clearance is good. Uh, clearance between the frame is good. Uh, no interference, um, you know, for a downpipe. Everything just fits in here very, very well. Um, you know, it's one of those complicated things when it comes to this because you never know quite what's going to fit, what's going to do well, you know, what's not going to interfere. Do you need to do something custom? And that's always complicated, but there is plenty of room here uh, with this, with this log. Um, and again, it just, it fits perfectly. It couldn't be any better. And the driver's side's no different, but it's a tight fit over here. There's no doubt about that. But everything fits in here perfectly. No interference with the steering. No interference with the frame. No interference with the control arm. Everything fits nice and tight, tucked up in there where it should be. So very, very good solution for the Chevelle F-body uh, exhaust manifold. Fits it perfectly. And from the bottom side, it's pretty simple. Just a simple crossover pipe here to connect the two sides together, and you're fine. Now, even with this one with the big bulky um, uh, T56 and the be big bell housing, you'll have no problem. You can adjust where that uh, crossover over pipe goes and kind of tuck it up against the uh, transmission a little tighter. But, uh, you know, even lower, this car is going to be probably a three inch drop, two and a half inch drop all the way around. And uh, it will not be a problem with the, uh, with the manifolds uh, and the crossover pipe. Uh, it'll be a custom built job to kind of, uh, you know, tie it all two together, but uh, no problem at all here from the bottom side. Uh, it's going to fit perfectly. Uh, the exits on the, the manifolds are perfect. So uh, very, very simple solution here on building a, a crossover pipe. Now, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned what I wasn't going to use anymore, and these are these forward and up-facing either exhaust manifolds or these cheap eBay headers that somebody gave me for an install. There's no reason to frustrate yourself with it. They don't fit very well. They put the heat up a little higher, uh, you know, so you're always constantly, you know, worried about burning yourself on them because uh, it doesn't matter how well you wrap them or your ceramic coat uh, set of cast iron manifolds they just don't fit that well 
Um, yeah, you can do a bit more of a custom job with them, you know, move the turbo around a little bit, but you know, for the most part, you'll just end up frustrating yourself for the amount of money you'll spend on that failure exhaust log. There's no reason to do it any other way. Um, you know, you may save yourself a few bucks here, you know, with this style, but quite honestly, there's, there's no reason to frustrate yourself with it. So anyway, failure for the win here. It's why I use what I use now. Well, that covers the awesome turbo log from failure performance. I think if you use this, you'll find it's a great fit for the Chevelle or the El Camino, uh, any of the A body cars and probably the G bodies as well. But, um, yeah, if you've tried to make your, one of your own in the past and you've had good success or you failed, <laughs> tell me about it below in the comments. Uh, I'd love to read it. Uh, certainly everybody kind of learns when we share some stories. And, you know, if you've had some good luck in the p past or you failed really bad, then, hey, we can either uh, learn a little bit together or laugh a little bit together. So, hey, if you like the video, do me a big favor and hit the like button. Uh, leave me a comment below. Tell me what you liked or disliked about the video. I love getting that feedback. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. We have new content that I put out, you know, quite frequently. And, and hopefully you'll find something cool with product rev reviews and tech tips. So I appreciate y'all. We'll catch you on the next video. See ya.